A few months ago, we released a video talking about Facebook carousel ads and how you can utilize them to make a good impression with your target audience. If you're interested in that, you can check out this video right here. But today we're gonna to talk about the same ad format on a different platform. We're gonna talk about LinkedIn carousel ads. So in this video, I wanna walk you through the different campaign objectives you can utilize with carousel ads. I wanna talk about the setup process for these. And then just like with Facebook, we're gonna talk about some of the ways that you can utilize carousel ads to engage with your target audience on LinkedIn. We're gonna start off by talking about the campaign objectives that will allow you to use carousel ads on LinkedIn. Here, you can see that you can use them for brand awareness, website visits, engagement, website conversions, and lead generation campaigns. So while that might seem like quite a number of campaigns, there are a couple of campaign objectives where you cannot use carousel ads. We're in the placeholder account that we use for this, so apologies for the red bar of death at the top, but when you go to create a brand new campaign, you're given this list of campaign objectives. Effectively, the only ones that will not allow you to use carousel ads are going to be video views, because you cannot use videos in carousel ads on LinkedIn as of the recording of this video in late 2022. You also cannot use carousel ads for talent leads, which we can't advertise for in this account anyway. And you're not able to use carousel ads for job applicants, but all other campaign objectives, you are eligible to use them. So when you're putting together your campaign and ad strategy, make sure that you're able to use the formats that you want to in the campaign objectives that you're intending to use. Now with that, let's get started making a placeholder carousel ad, and I'll show you how to set them up. There are two main examples that I'm gonna give you today. One is going to be with the website conversions campaign objective, and the other is gonna be lead generation because there's a slight difference between them. But first I wanna start with the more common option and that's website conversions. For the purpose of this video, I will not be going through any of the additional settings within the LinkedIn Campaigns Manager. If you wanna know anything about that, you can check out any of the other LinkedIn videos that we have on the platform. For right now, the only thing I wanna do is make sure that we choose ad format as carousel image ad. And then I'm gonna move into the third step of the campaign setup. And that is going to be to create the ads. If you have existing carousel ads, you can utilize the browse existing content feature. In this campaign, we do not. So I'm just gonna create new to walk you through how to set one up. Just like with any other ad creative on the platform, you can give this ad a name. So I'm gonna do that just so I don't have any errors. And then we can start to get into the rest of the ad builder over here off to the side. Uh, the setup flow for a carousel ad is going to be a little bit different than a regular single image or video ad. You still have the introductory text that you can have up at the top that will show up above any of the imagery and creative that you have in place. And for this, they recommend a maximum of 150 characters before the copy would be truncated, but you do have up to 255 characters available. I put in some placeholder text just so there would be something there. And the next piece you have is the destination URL. You'll need to include either the HTTP or HTTPS information here but this is going to be one of the options for a user's destination page if they click on your ad. Although I didn't do it here, you would need to apply any of the UTM or parameter tracking to the end of your URL in this field that you would wanna have for this link. So make sure that you include that in the destination URL. And then I'm gonna skip this last checkbox until after we've gone through some of the cards. So let's scroll down a little bit and start to get into the actual details of the card itself. I just headed into my own LinkedIn feed to start to highlight some of the differences between a single image ad and a carousel ad. First, the introductory text up at the top is gonna to populate the exact same way for a carousel ad that it will for a single image ad, so it'll show here. But the reason I jumped here is because I wanted you to know what the card headline was going to relate to. In a single image ad, you have just this headline down here at the bottom. In this example, it's put ZipRecruiter to work for you, and you only have one headline that corresponds with the imagery available. In a carousel ad, when we are creating individual cards within the carousel, each card will have its own image, its own headline, and potentially its own destination URL as well. So just like we've done with a number of other videos on this channel, I'm gonna put together a really ugly example of a LinkedIn carousel ad, but it'll at least help me convey the different types of tactics you can use in this ad format. So give me just a second. And here we have two very basic cards promoting effectively just videos about a specific channel. 
The first is the Google Ads PPC videos we have, and then I put in the link for the playlist on our YouTube channel. And the second is for LinkedIn paid media videos. And again, I put in the link to the playlist itself of all LinkedIn ads videos that we have available on paid media pros. Now for this specific example, if I wanted to add additional channels, I could add another card. You'll see here that I'm allowed to add up to 10 individual cards on this carousel. So if I wanted to have a Facebook card, Microsoft card, TikTok card, I could do all of these and create individual cards for each of the different channel types. I'm not gonna do that because there are a number of other functionality pieces that I wanna show you. The first is that if you add a card that you don't want to use, all you have to do is click this trash can and it'll disappear. Let's also say that you want to reorder the cards that you have. Maybe rather than having Google show up first, we want LinkedIn to show up first. So all we need to do is come over to these dots, click on this, drag it up, and then we'll be able to reorder the cards that we have in this carousel ad. Another customization piece is going to be in the image itself. You'll see here that the image I used for Google Ads is just the logo, but the image that I have for LinkedIn is one of our title cards, which is quite frankly a very bad choice of imagery for this. That is well known. But you can also see here that there is a crop function and a pencil function up here. So if you're trying to upload an image and you decide you don't like it, all you need to do is click the pencil and it'll open up your finder on a Mac or whatever the equivalent is on a PC. You'll be able to upload a new file. But if you want to retain the image that you have and just crop it into a different field, all you have to do is click crop. I'll scroll down a little bit so we can see this a little bit better. And then there are a number of tools that will allow you to zoom out or zoom in on the creative if you want to. Let's go back just a little bit. You can also straighten the image by tilting it one way or another. I'm gonna put this back to zero. You can also utilize this flip tool to flip the image one way, shape or form, whatever makes sense for you. And then lastly, you can come up in the image itself and drag the background image that you have into alignment. And for right now, that's all I'm gonna do. And then I'll click crop. And now my image looks very similar to the Google Ads one because I've focused on just the LinkedIn logo. Now, while we're talking about the imagery and making it look good itself, I do want to talk about a number of the different ad specifications. You can see most of them over here off to the right, where it suggests that you should use rich media, which can only be non-animated. And it recommends that you should use a 1080 by 1080 image with a one-to-one -one aspect ratio. If we get into the more specific help section with different ad specs, you can see that the file size can only be up to 10 megabytes and that the maximum image dimensions can be 4320 by 4320. We already talked about the introductory text limits being at 255, but preferred at 150 so it doesn't get truncated. But the headline also has its own limitations and can be truncated as well, depending on how long it is. In this version of the carousel ad specs, we get a little bit more information where it says that the character limit is 45 for carousel ads that send users to a landing page and a 30 character limit on those that utilize a lead generation form. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit, why that's different. But the last piece that I wanna call out is that in this example, I've utilized individual landing pages for each of the cards because I wanna send users to different pages of the YouTube channel. That would mean that each of these also needs to have all of its tracking included on the end of the URL. So any parameters we wanted to use, we would need to apply those here as well. But if you don't need to use individual landing pages and you plan on only using one for every single card, it's very easy to roll out that information by just checking this box up here that we ignored earlier. And this allows you to use the destination URL that's in this field for all of the individual cards in the carousel. So if I check the box here, it's going to erase all of the different customizations that I put in. It's gonna send users only to the page that's in this destination URL field. In my opinion, that's a very bad user experience for the types of cards that I have set up. But again, this is only a very ugly example for the sake of this video. So I'm just gonna come click Save Ad. And the only reason I did that is because I want you to be able to preview it and see what it looks like. So in the desktop feed, this is what it's gonna look like. You can see our two cards here, and then we've got the headlines below. And then each of these will direct you to the Paid Media Pros page of the website. But again, you can see our introductory text at the top, and then the headlines for each card were down below. Earlier, I said that we would also be looking at a lead generation carousel ad. So I'm going to change this campaign objective to be lead generation and get right back to this builder page. Just like before, I'm gonna create a new ad. And again, you still have the ability to name the ad. The introductory text is going to be the same. You still have the option to add in a destination URL as a placeholder. 
and then each of the individual cards still gets its own option for a custom destination URL. But down below is where you'll find the form details. And here you get to apply a single form to the entire carousel ad. You do not get to customize the form for each card, but you can choose the different call to action that you wanna use. And then you get to choose whichever form you want from your form library. And the main reason I wanted to show you a difference of the two is because the lead generation forms are the only type of carousel ad that will include your call to action in the card itself. Again, they will be the same for every card, but it does take up a little bit more room off to the side, which is why earlier you would have noted that the character count for a lead generation card is only 30 characters as opposed to 45 on a regular website landing page carousel ad, but it is a little bit more appealing to have the call to action show up right there. So depending on whether you wanna use website or a landing page, or if you wanna utilize lead generation forms with your carousel ads, the character counts for your headlines will be a little bit different and you will get to choose whichever form you want for your carousel ad. Now that you know how to set up a carousel ad, I wanna give you a few examples that I've seen in my own LinkedIn feed and some suggestions for how you can utilize them to target your custom audience. I know we do a lot of disclaimers on this channel, but this is gonna be kind of a big one. It was really difficult to find carousel ads to show up on LinkedIn. So I only have a handful of examples to go through and some of them might not be perfect for what we wanna do, but hopefully I'll be able to talk you through the logic here. The first one is going to be this ad that I got for Chanel. And the main focus that they have here is to focus on a single product line or a single product. Chanel makes a lot of different items from clothes to handbags to jewelry to makeup, and here they're focusing just on the makeup line, even if the ad itself might be a little lackluster and out of place, in my opinion. But if you think about how you wanna get in front of specific business folks, is there a specific product line that you have that might be beneficial, or an individual product that you wanna highlight many different aspects of in a carousel ad, rather than just using one single image ad to try and convey lots of different ideas? Next is gonna be highlighting benefits. This Amigo ad is talking about automating your data exports to Google Sheets, and each of the different cards has a headline and an image that talks about a different benefit that you have from using their product. You can sync all of your data sources to Google Sheets, you can connect your data source, automate those exports, and collaborate with your team pretty easily. And each one of these cards does a good job of highlighting all of those different benefits from that single product. As you can see here, this one has a call to action of sign up on each of the different cards. And every time you open that, you'll see a form pop up that looks like this and it populates all the information. And then I would just click submit, super easy. Another option is to outline different components of the same service. So the Maryland University of Integrative Health is trying to get you to sign up for their program so you can gain practical skills and knowledge and build your career. But you can do that in a number of different ways. You can either get an MS in nutrition and integrative health. You can get a certificate in nutrition and integrative health. You could also get a certificate in culinary health and hearing, or you can get a doctorate of clinical nutrition. Now, I don't necessarily know if these images really match up since we're trying to talk about education and this looks like something I would see more for Instacart, but this ad itself is trying to show you all the different ways that you can interact and work with them to reach a specific goal of being a nutrition and health professional. Lastly, you can also create a conversation flow. Now, this is the LG Chloe, I'm gonna guess. It's a serve bot. I really don't know why I'm being advertised to buy a robot. And I'll be honest, I do not understand this ad even a little bit, I, I really don't. But that being said, you can see that each card leads further into a conversation. The first one just says never, and the second one follows up with let them be a part, and then love must go on on the third one. Now, while this ad still might not make sense to me, you can see how the cards flow together because the language on one card flows into the next one because it's meant to be effectively a complete sentence or a complete thought across multiple different cards. So again, none of these are perfect examples, but it at least gives you some idea about how people are using carousel cards. And then here are a few others. You can utilize them to showcase customer reviews. You can create a continuous scene. So while that robot ad created a continuous conversation, you could make all of the images flow together like a big panorama scene with one card being furthest to the left, next one being slightly to the right, 
so on and so forth. And then we saw that one good Google Sheets integration ad talk about the different benefits of using their software. You could also outline the different features of that software. So let's say for that robot ad, maybe it talks about the specific hardware that that robot has or the different capabilities that it has. Maybe it talks about its range of motion and how long the battery life lasts. Those are different features of that robot that could have been promoted in a carousel ad. As I mentioned at the very top of this video, we do have another video talking about Facebook carousel ads, and I'll be quite honest about it. The examples that I was able to find for carousel ads on Facebook are a lot better than LinkedIn. I wanted to give you some platform specific examples here and some overviews, but if you want further ideas and maybe a few more visuals on how to use carousel ads, I highly recommend you hop back and check out that Facebook carousel video to get some more ideas. Overall, I still think carousel ads are a great way to interact with your target audience and get a number of different points across in one ad unit rather than needing to use a single image ad to convey lots of different points. The setup process is very simple. It's not that dissimilar from a single image ad. You have lots of customization options by being able to crop and change your imagery. You can utilize lots of different landing pages for each card, and you can rearrange the order to make sure that you're telling a complete story from start to finish. If you have any questions about carousel ads on LinkedIn, on Facebook, or any other of the ad formats that we have on any of the social platforms, feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.